it's live right now. It's live. Yeah, you can start. Uh, I hope like this is live session. So yeah, you can start now. Please introduce yourself a little bit, and then you so, can start. Yeah. So, uh, Kopio, um, welcome to this live live stream session talking about the Hornby Scholarship. Um, this is Kopio, who uh, won uh, last year's a uh, Hornby, who was one of the lucky people from last year's Hornby Scholarship. Uh, which was at Warwick University, although I believe now it's moving to another university in the UK called Exeter. And the purpose of the meeting today is for, for me, and my name's Mike, um, and I'm going to be um, hosting this meeting, and we're going to be hearing from uh, Ko Pyo all about the, Co the, all about the Hornby Scholarship. Um, the way that the, it's going to work is that at the beginning, uh, Copio is going to give us a short presentation all about the Hornby Scholarship. And then I am going to be asking him some questions. And while I'm asking him some questions, what I would love is for the audience to prepare themselves because they may have questions that they want to ask. And Copio would be delighted to ask answer any of your questions. Don't worry, is my question a silly question? It doesn't matter. If it's a question that you want to know the answer to, just ask it. Um, so uh, with that, what I what I might do is hand over to Ko Pio and let him begin his presentation. Uh, Ko Pio, over to you. Thank you very much, Mike, for um, the introduction and thank you Fluency Butterfly International for inviting me to share um, the Hornby Scholarship. Um, so my name is Pio Witton. Uh, yeah, um, you can also call me Ko Pio. Um, so today, like Mike introduced, uh, there will be three main parts in today's session. Firstly, I will start with sharing um, a little bit about Hornby Scholarship. And then we will have an interview with Mike. Um, Mike will ask some of the common questions that um, people, uh, but student might has might might have about a uh, scholarship application, university application, and study in the UK, things like that. And then we will end the session by uh, answering some of the questions from the audience. So let me share my um, slide for Hombi scholarship. Uh, hi, Mike. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it clearly. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so, today's the first part of today's session is about sharing about Hornby Trust Scholarship. Um, so there will be six main um, six main parts in the first session. So, starting with what it, what the scholarship is about who can apply and why we should apply this scholarship and how we can apply it and when we should start our application and then the question and answer session. Uh, so firstly, I'd like to start with what the scholarship is about. Um, so it's basically, it's about, we know that it's about Hornby Trust Scholarship, um, but I wonder whether the audience might, might know this uh, scholarship or not because most people, especially from uh, Myanmar, don't know about this scholarship. Um, and maybe because this scholarship is only for the teachers, uh, only for English language teachers or educators. So maybe that's one of the reason. Uh, so basically this scholarship is, as the name is go, is uh, sponsored by the Hornby Education Trust. Um, if you want to know more about this scholarship, we will provide the link at the end of the session today. You can also click on the link and find out more about this scholarship. Um, so although we focus uh, on Hornby Trust Scholarship, uh, today's talk is not just about Hornby Trust Scholarship, it's also about how we can um, 
we can research about scholarship and how we can propose for a scholarship and things like that. Uh, so, for example, um, whatever scholarship we aim to apply for, the first thing we need to know is um, what the scholarship we are applying for is about. So that's how I start my my um, uh, preparation for any scholarship I'm applying for. So that's why I start with the question, what? Uh, so so usually um, the Home Beatrice Scholarship is um, offered to 10 uh, teachers from different countries across the world. Um, and then we can apply for the scholarship first. But this year they changed, not this year, study from um, last year. So they changed a little bit. And so we need to apply for the university first. So the university we need to apply for is the Exeter University. And the course we need to apply for is the MEDT soil um, degree. So, so that's why we also need to know about what is MEDT soil and what is Exeter University. Uh, that's the next thing we need to research about. And um, the last thing we need to know about is uh, what is Hornby Educational Trust. Um, so. Because we, if we are applying for a uh, scholarship, we should know about uh, who funded this scholarship. And if we know about who funded this scholarship, uh, we can also purple, purple more in our application statements or essay, uh, whatever like this. Uh, so, so that's why I would like to recommend if you are about to apply for the Hornby Trust Scholarship. I would like to recommend to um, to learn a little bit about Hornby Educational Trust. Uh, so basically, Hornby Educational Trust uh, is uh, founded by um, AS Hornby. Um, if you have, um, I I wonder you might not know about AS Hornby because uh, I I didn't also know about Hornby before I applied for the scholarship. So, but actually, he's quite famous for. His work in Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary, uh, which uh, which is a dictionary, um, like almost all the English language learners in the world use this dictionary. So he um, he, he he wrote this dictionary and he got money from this dictionary uh, publication and and so he he established uh, a dictionary trust by using some of the money from this dictionary, um. So basically, he he was also a teacher. Uh, he's a, he was also a teacher in Japan, and he teach he taught um English uh language learners like from um other countries like from our country. So so he wants to he he wants to devote um all he wants to devote the money he got from this book uh to this kind of educational work. Uh, especially for the development of English language teaching, so he established he established this attraction trust, and um, every year they they provide fundings to ten teachers from different countries, and they also uh, they also uh, do other kinds of um, work uh, in cooperation with the British Council and the Oxford University, um, including like providing funding for the. Um, uh, Project related with the development of English language teaching. Uh, so that's the basic information about Hornby Trust, uh, Hornby Trust and Hornby Trust Scholarship. But I would like to suggest uh, if you want to know more about it and to to find out more about them before you apply for this scholarship. Um, so who can apply for this scholarship? So. Uh, if we want to know whether we can apply for this scholarship or not, uh, so we need to check the eligibility criteria. So usually we can see them in the scholarship description. Um, so for example, like for this scholarship, it, the first thing is they give scholarship to teachers and educators from a low or middle income country. So not from developed countries. So. Uh, so we can apply for people from Myanmar. We can apply for this scholarship because we are from a, from a low income country. So we don't need to worry about this fact. We are eligible for this scholarship. Uh, but the next thing is we need to have at least three years of teaching experience, or maybe if it is not teaching, maybe kind of professional experience. Uh, it is not a kind of formal 
experience you can include maybe your volunteer experience or things like things like that but you should be um an english language teacher or educator or your work should be related with english language teaching so if you are from another field you are not eligible to apply for the scholarship uh, that's one important thing we need to know about and another thing is uh, we need to have at least an undergrad degree or a postgraduate degree with good grades, um, because this is a scholarship for MA study, so a master degree in the UK. So um, basically, we need we need at least an undergraduate degree. Uh, so, and then we need to have at least um, IS uh, score of six point five, and so. Only if we have got undergraduate degree and then the uh, the uh, the necessary the IS score, we can apply for the university. But but it doesn't um confirm that you you are you if you meet all the requirements here, um you you will get scholarship. It doesn't mean like that. There are many things to do. That's why I would like to say that these eligibility criteria are just like the tip of an iceberg. Uh, that is the tip of an iceberg. So there are many things we need to know. We need to know more about. We need to learn about this scholarship um, under the water. So, because so uh, they give ten teachers or ten educators from different countries each year. So it means that um, it is not even possible to get um, uh, one scholar from one country because there are many people. From different countries who have met these eligibility criteria so it doesn't mean that only if you you have got these criteria it doesn't mean that uh, you will be selected for the scholarship these are just the tip of an iceberg so we need to know more about the um, the part under the water so that's why i try to explore who in that they really want to give uh, funding they really want to give scholarship for uh, so to know more about who they really want so what what do we need to do is we need to analyze the scholarship essay questions. We can see what kind of people do they want uh, from these scholarship uh, essay questions and the activities of um, what the homie trust is doing currently doing or previously what they have done before. Um, that's why um, the first slide of our person uh, my talk I am still. Um, what do we need to research first? So by, by trying to know these things about the activities and by analyzing scholarship essay questions, we can know more about what kind of people, what kind of person do they want to give funding? Uh, so this is just um, my understanding of who in that they really want. So um, you might also explore yourself what kind of people they want. Um, so. According to my own experience of applying for the scholarship, I think uh, they want a teacher who have experience in teaching, not only teaching ourselves, but also in supporting other uh, English language teachers or in ELT professionals. It means um, it's not just about teaching ours, it's also about, we need to expand our horizon. Uh, it's also about supporting, helping other teachers, even if you are not, uh, kind of doing teacher development activity you might you might be supporting other teachers and that's one important thing um another thing is um, they want a scholar who is aware of the challenges faced by ELT teachers in their country so the challenges for example what kind of challenges we have in Myanmar in time regarding English language teaching and we need to have an idea of how to address these challenges um, for example, that the challenge of um, uh, maybe uh, we can talk about, in my case, uh, we can talk about uh, moving to online teaching. How can we teach online effectively during the outbreak of COVID-19 and the military coup? Uh, uh, things like the challenges we face and we need to have an idea of so how to address these challenges. And the next thing uh, is, uh, so they also... Um, well, a kind of person who see the benefit of the UK master course. That's why I'm, I, in my first slide, I include uh, to research about the course in uh, the course at Exeter University, MEDD. So you, you need to look at the courses available there. Um, so 
uh, to reset the courses there and to point out what kind of benefit uh, can we get from this UK master course and both for our own professional development and also for the development of the ENT community in the country and if possible beyond. So it's, it's not just about our personal development, it's also about the development of ENT. That's why uh, they want a kind of person who who has the potential, who has the potential for the development of ENT in their own country and if possible beyond. Um, and the next, the last thing is about a kind of scholar who have a particular interest in specific area of TESOL. Um, TESOL have many different areas. Uh, so you need to have a kind of interest or you need to have an awareness of these areas of TESOL and you need to explain why you have an interest in this area. Um, so these are, these are, if we go deeper um, into the scholarship essay questions and what the, the activity home is doing, we can see these things. And uh, so that's why I like to conclude that they want a teacher who is dedicated to improving the quality of English language teaching in their own country. And they have the potential, who have the potential to become the leaders in the field of ENT. So that's the kind of person they want. Um, so we need to show that we are such a such a person in our scholarship essay. So if we are not ready, then we need to propose. You can propose from now on. Uh, I mean, applying for a scholarship is not just, uh, I want to apply now and I want to get now. It's a process. Sometimes it might take year, years, but it's worth getting a scholarship. Um, so that that's how I understand about what they really want, who in depth. Okay, so and so it seems like um it seems like very difficult to get this scholarship because the number is quite low, only ten teachers and from different countries, there are many countries. Every year um uh the, the applications might be uh, around about uh six hundred. These six hundred are teachers who have who have who are qualifying enough for the application? Uh, so we have to compete with them. Uh, so you might ask the question, why I should apply this scholarship? So I would like to uh, point out the the benefit of this scholarship. So <clears throat> so basically, it's a fully funded scholarship. So we don't need to worry about um, the visa application fee, the travel, transportation, uh, tuition fee everything we don't need to worry about we can study we can focus on our own study we don't need to worry about money um leaving study from leaving from the country to, uh, to arriving at the uk so we don't need to worry about these things but there are also many other benefits compared with other kinds of scholarship um so the first thing is it's a great opportunity to immerse into the global ent community because uh, during our um, during our um, uh, scholarship um, year, we we have a chance to attend several international uh, ELNT um, conferences, and we have a chance to meet with uh, the well known people from the ELNT community because um, even the trustee themselves are also. Uh, well-known persons, well-known um, authors, or maybe educators, professors from the ELT world. So it's a great opportunity to have a, a chance to to be in that network of ELT community. Um, and they, they also provide individualized care support because we have only 10 scholars every year and we study together in a university. So uh, it's like the scholars are like a VNT team in the university too. So they provide... Um, they provide not just uh, educational support, but also have entertainment and everything. Um, uh, so, for example, uh, so every month we uh, they provide as um, a ticket, maybe a theater to watch um, to watch um, plays or maybe to watch movies. So, and they provide a transportation fee to go there. So we don't need to worry about them, and they they usually provide. Um, we got, we've got a chance to watch um, every month. Um, so, for example, the first picture, as you can see, it's in uh, uh, the Shakespeare theater. Um, so, uh, 
we watched um, a Shakespeare play, although I don't, I didn't and exactly know what they are talking about. <laughs> it's quite difficult to understand, but it's a great experience of seeing um, the play. Uh, and and we they, they provide us the, the sport membership, so uh, so we can also uh, um, we don't need to worry about our health and education. So many things, and also we will be the uh, one of the member of the Hombi alumni. It's also a great um, opportunity. So basically, if you got selected for this scholarship, you will become part of the ELT global community. Uh, not just your local community, and you have many experiences of uh, presenting at conferences, uh, com uh, presenting and um, networking with ELT um, gurus, let's say. So it's a great opportunity. That's why um, I think it's worth applying for this scholarship, although it's difficult to get um, selected for that. And the next thing we need to think about is why they should give us the funding. Uh, so we need to show that they should give us the funding, uh, especially in, in our essay first, and then in the interview later, if we got uh, shortlisted. Uh, so, so whatever you write, you need to focus on both personal benefit and uh, the development of ELT in your country and beyond. So it's not just about for the community, it's also about yourself. So um, it's also practical to talk about ourselves, our own personal development. And, and, and the development of your country is not in other areas, it's in, in the area of ELT. So uh, that's we we need to show in our essay, in our scholarship application. Uh, so how we can apply for this scholarship? Uh, usually, uh, so when I apply for this scholarship, I so we 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 firstly we applied for the scholarship application, and when we got uh, shortlisted, we applied for the university application. But uh, last year they changed the process, so we need to apply for the university application fast, university application fast, and then we will get the number from the university, and then we can apply for the scholarship application. So the, uh, the process is a little bit different now. Um, so that's why we need to go, if you were interested in it, um, so we need to go to the university uh, courses and, and the, the university or extra MEDT so courses, and you can find the um, uh, scholarship funding there uh, about Hornby Trust Scholarship. And as part of the university application, um, so you will need the at least one transcripts of transcripts and degree certificate of undergrad degree. And you will need to write a personal statement. A personal statement is basically about uh, your uh, why you are interested in this course. It's not about scholarship application. It's about university application. So you you, you need to write about why you are interested in these courses and um, what are your experiences, what are your past experiences and what you want to be in the future and how this will be useful in your future career, things like that. And they might they might look at your uh, presentation style in your personal statement, your your academic writing. So uh, you also need to write carefully about this personal statement. It's not just about your degree, it's also about personal statement. When they uh, decide they should accept this student or not. And you need the reference from, reference can be from your, um, colleague or maybe uh, from your teacher uh, or maybe it can be from anything uh, the one who knows very well about you so uh, basically we need these things and we don't need IS goal at why you are applying for the university application um, uh, why you're applying for the university application but you will need the IS goal when you get shortlisted for uh, from the scholarship and if you got shortlisted, so they will provide the fan, the the test fee, IS test fee, uh, to take the IS. So you don't need to worry about the test fee. Um, but but so they changed the process a little bit. So, uh, before before last year, before last year, so they worked together with the British Council, British Council. So the British Council um helped in. In the process of uh, the taking the iron test and paying for the iron test fee, but they change a little bit. 
So they are not working together with uh, British Council uh, in term regarding the scholarship application. They just work with the university. So um, if you got shortlisted, so you might need to take the IELTS test yourself. But they were refunded. They were uh, they were give the, uh, the 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 cost of the test fee after you you got the test results. So they were refunded to you. So uh, it's it's. Uh, it's only after you got shortlisted, but, but before you go shortlisted, you don't need to worry about any money. So you just need to focus on the university application and scholarship application. And when you apply for the university application, if you haven't got the IS score, uh, you just write a statement that um, you are applying for the Hanbi scholarship and you will take the IS test um, when you got shortlisted or things like that. And then they will accept you if you are passing the statement is strong and if you are um eligible for the university courses after you apply for the university application you will get the uh extra student number so you need that number to apply for the scholarship so you will need to use this number in your scholarship application um you need to answer five essays five scholarship application essays these essays are uh, the crucial part of the uh, scholarship so you better purple uh, you uh, you brought a proposal um before the deadline, so yeah, you you might need to brainstorm the ideas and then write it and then add it again. Um, so uh, we have to do a lot of revision on the scholarship essay. So each essay have uh, three hundred word counts. So it's not that much, but um, there are many things to propose for these essays, and the deadline is much. Uh, the first of March, so um, it's about a, a month from now on. So, uh, so you still have time to propose for that. But remember, you need to apply for the university application first before you apply for the scholarship application. So it's a process. So you, if you are interested in, you better uh, propose from now. So, uh, why should I start? Like I said, uh, so the best. Time to start is uh, as soon as possible. So maybe from at, after the end of today's uh, webinar. So it's better to start now uh, because it's a process. It's not uh, something we can do. Um, we can do very quickly. So we need to propose a lot. Uh, so this is these are basic things about the scholarship, and there are some general suggestions. Uh, uh, I'd like to give. Uh, so according to my experiences, we need to be familiar with the international and local ELT associations because it's not about the personal development. It's also about the development of ELT community. So uh, we need to be familiar with the international and local ELT so associations, for example, like ISTFL, ISTFL and TSO International Association. ISTFL is the UK based the uh, the world's largest ELT uh, association. TSO International Association is a US based, um, the largest uh, TSO International Association. And locally, we have, uh, for example, like uh, Myanmar TSO Association, MM TSO. So you need to be familiar with them, if possible, trying to participate in their program, trying to be a member of these associations. Um, it's better if you have experiences of presenting or uh, participating, contributing to these associations. Uh, this will be very useful when you apply for the, uh, when you write your essays. And you need to be familiar with the trends, current trends in ELT, for example, like multilingualism or translanguaging. You need to pick one trend you are interested in, and then you need to, uh, you may look at more about these trends, and then you can write them in your uh, essays. So these are just some of the trends in ELT. So uh, you can just present about any trend you like. Uh, and also, uh, it, if you if you research uh, about home education and trust, you might also notice about the decentry ELT, which is the, the main focus of home trust, what they are currently doing, decentry ELT. Uh, so you might you might have a look at this if you are really interested in it, and you can include them in your scholarship essays. Uh, so be familiar with this topic is not is a little bit different from other kinds of scholarship. So they are very focused on the particular field, uh, particular field. It is ELT. 
Um, so, um, as a bonus, uh, when I when I propose for my essays, uh, before I write, how do I reflect myself and present myself? I usually use this approach. Um, but we call it star approach. You might Google it. You can find it uh, details about this approach. Uh, so star approach is basically to talk about our skill. When we talk about our skill or quality, uh, so we can, instead of simply saying, for example, uh, I want to talk about my leadership skill, but instead of simply saying, I'm a good leader, I have a good leadership skill, uh, instead of simply saying, I, I provide a context, um, here they call it situation. I provide a context or an example of how I show this leadership. Uh, and then um, in that situation, it might be a problem, for example, a problem of organizing uh, organizing an event maybe. And then um, how did I take action to address this issue? And uh, what are the results? And uh, why I get that result because of my leadership skill. So I'm trying to provide as many evidence, uh, as much evidence as possible by using this approach. Uh, you can also think about uh, your own experiences. For example, uh, when I talk about uh, one of the challenges of uh, ENT in my country, so I provide the context of uh, teaching in public uh, public school, uh, the challenges of um, the challenges of introducing communicative language teaching approach to the uh, public school because uh, we usually need to focus on the exam in public school, but how can we integrate the, the communicative approach to uh, the public school context? And that's a challenge, that's a situation, that's a challenge for me. And how, what step did I take in terms of action, what I did to integrate this approach to, to my own teaching and what are the results? So this is one example of how we can reflect and how we can present uh, our our WhatsApp in uh, scholarship essay, and so uh, so we just uh, I just shared about uh, what the scholarship is about, who we can who 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 they give the funding, and why we should apply, and why we they should give funding to us, and how we can apply, and when we should apply. Um, so it's a process. So um, when I am purple for my scholarship application, it's not just uh, the only scholarship I'm applying for. I'm trying to profile for many other scholarships. And scholarship had different dates, uh, opening dates and deadlines. So I make a list of uh, a table like this, uh, how many scholarships are eligible for me and which scholarship I can apply. And then, so I, I'm applying for as many scholarships as I can that are eligible, um, that I am eligible. So, so the, the point I want to make here is it's a process. So we better prepare in advance and we better um we better um think about reflect about our set what are our strengths and what are our weakness. Okay. So that's all of all I want to share about the Hombi Trust. And so if you have questions, you can start to post so, questions. So, Kokio, that was, yeah. that was wonderful. What I'm proposing you, to do is I'm going to start asking questions, but what I would love the audience to do is to think about questions themselves. Um, the, the questions I'm going to ask are going to be, some of them are going to be quite general questions. Um, yeah. I, I don't know the specifics of the audience, but I suspect that there are, are going to be some people who are listening today who are not going to be eligible for the Hornby Scholarship but they yeah. are interested in how do I get a scholarship to university, both undergraduate and master's? What is the process to get a scholarship? What do I need to do? And I think mm -hmm. a lot of what you've already said in the presentation has been very useful for that. Um, but um, you've talked a lot about Hornby, um, but you didn't talk very much about yourself and your own personal um, development before Hornby. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career as a teacher leading up to uh, to, to getting this scholarship? Thank you, Mike. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so I, I used to work as a teacher in a public high school. Um, 
before I uh, I got the scholarship. So, and it, it's in a rural area. It's in a, a village. I used to work there. So, we didn't have that much opportunity. So those days we did we have got a week of the internet, but we don't have that much opportunity to know about what scholarships are available and uh, but so. If there is a will, I mean, it's it's possible to to get a scholarship. Uh, so what 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 I did is I'm um, so we don't have so the online teaching or Zoom are not that popular those days. So uh, what we did, what I did was uh, usually so there were some um, events um, organized about uh, kind of uh, scholarship sharing sessions, but they usually in. Um, cities like Yangon or Mandalay uh, but I try to go there so it's quite far from uh, from my place it usually take sometimes usually take two hours to get there but I, I'm trying to I try to go there and um, listen to or to uh, listen to them sharing their experiences of how they propose for the scholarship and how they got this uh, that's that's uh, how I mean that how we can um, learn about uh, the best way to learn about uh, the scholarship is to listen to the scholarship alumni so we we got to know a lot about the scholarship so these days we are lucky so we can just know um, uh, about many scholarships so we can just join online so it's really great these days but it's quite challenging those days um that's but, about yeah and, and, what, and when you when you did your application uh, yeah I thought there was one thing that was very interesting that you talked about, which was this your star uh, process of answering yeah. essays. Um, um, and uh, I don't know if you would agree, but but for for anyone who is listening today who is going to be applying for a scholarship, whatever kind of scholarship it is, it might be a Prospect Burma scholarship, a Child's Dream scholarship, a Chevening scholarship. The way to answer any any essay in a scholarship where they're asking you about yourself is this star process. Would you agree with that? Yeah, of course. Um, I used this uh, star, a star approach, not just in uh, this Hornby scholarship application, also in other applications as well. And it's, it's a kind of transferable. Um, yeah, it's quite useful. Um, so that's why i i show here and even if we're not writing about scholarship it's also a good way to reflect about our staff you know we think about the 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 past experience uh we did and how how we did it if there is something wrong it's also good to talk about we did wrong but we learned something from there yeah Yes. And would you that. would you also agree that in if you, in an interview, if you're being asked de detailed questions about about your leadership or about um, a, a language a tuition in your country, that actually the star approach you can use again in an interview to answer interview yeah. questions? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I remember that. Yeah. Before I got the hobby scholarship, I got another scholarship. Um, so, yeah. And at that scholarship interview, I use this approach, the star approach. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you did it, it then. You used the star approach then. You gave yeah, us the exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and going on in a little bit more, going on to your, the essays that you had to write and the interview that you had to face to win this scholarship. Can you tell us a little bit about what your essays were and how your interview went? Um, so, before we talk before we talk about essays and interviews uh it's also about uh i mean our staff fast uh so we can we can write um what whatever we write in our essays and whatever we talk in our interviews are about us so um so the good qualities or the experiences we have we write or we we, we talk in as a should reflect our staff uh, so I mean, if you want to show that you deserve the scholarship, you need to propose yourself uh, that you are doing these things really. Um, so, for example, in so as a teacher, so I I teach I try to teach as best as I can in my own classes, and I also try to do um, supporting other teachers, even if it might not be a big thing for others, but 
it shows that I'm trying to support other teachers. I initiate a kind of discussion session with other teachers. It's a kind of very small group, but I can write about them in my scholarship essay. And, and it means that I'm doing my best for my professional development. I never stop learning. I never stop for my professional development. So the first thing is, so I did it. I really did it. And I... I I try to show them in the application essay. So it means, mm, how can I say it's it means uh I re I did it, but but some people there are many people who really did it who who did more than I can do, but they don't know how to show them in their scholarship essay or interviews. So there's a kind of um disconnect uh between their real life and then the scholarship application essay. In that case, the best thing to think about might be uh, using that STAR approach to reflect about what I did and brainstorm these things and then make a list of the things they do and um, propose for their scholarship essays, trying to write them and add to them again, and things like that. So the, these, so um, it's good to have uh, good experiences doing professional development, but it's also uh, necessary to show them in your essay, to present them in your essay, and and the, and the interview, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. And and what you're trying to show in your essays and in your interview, as politely as possible, is how clever and hardworking you are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because you've done a lot of research on the course and the university and the subject, it shows that you are focused, that this is the subject that you want to study. They can see that you that you are very focused and you've done your research on it and you can show yeah. that in the essays. And then finally, at the end of your presentation, you talked about what they were looking for. They were looking for somebody who uh, would benefit both personally and yeah. the community would benefit. So yeah. you can show, and perhaps your volunteer work, if you're a facilitator at Fluency Butterfly, or you're doing other voluntary work, or your yeah. work within the subject, you can show that, okay, if this person is, if Sandy is to be given this scholarship, it is because she's clever, she's focused, but also because if we give her this education, she, it's going to not only going to benefit her, but she's going to go back to her community and uh, and and benefit the community as well. This is what you're wanting to show in your essays and your interview to become one of the ten out of the six hundred, the 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 six hundred underneath the iceberg and the ten that win the the prize. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Can I move on now to? You arrived in the UK, and I think uh, this is the first time you'd ever been on an aeroplane coming here. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> you arrived in this very strange country uh, in in January. It, it it snowed overnight, and there you yeah. were in this strange place, all on your own, uh, with a very different culture. Can you tell us a little bit about how you found uh, moving to the UK and learning in a UK university? Thank you, Mike. Yeah, it's a big difference. Um, I mean, so firstly, it's a start with the cultural difference. So the culture is quite different from our own country. Um, so the weather is different and the academic um, studying at the university is also different. The academic culture is also different. So um, so although we expect that this will be different in the uh, in, in, uh, in real life um so yeah they're really different and but for me personally for me i love um trying to uh it's also it's different it's difficult to adapt to these differences because uh even the weather but i love uh learning about the culture and i i love um I love taking challenges for even for the academic uh, academic differences uh so for me it's difficult and challenging, but I I love it. And so, for example, even the cultural differences, I can apply them when I um, teach my students back in my country. So I can talk about these cultural differences. So everything is new to me and different, but I take them as a new opportunity to learn. Um, so um, uh, 
but the most challenging part is the ac academic uh, challenge uh, because especially so um, during the lecture and seminar at the university so usually it's a kind of we have a discussion with um, uh, our course mate and then the uh, the professors and lecturers uh, so when we discuss so we have to um, so we have we couldn't say what we want, whatever we want to say. We have to provide evidence of what we are saying. Uh, so even when we are writing assignments, so we need to provide evidence. Um, but the problem with uh, maybe it might also be for most Myanmar students. But uh, for me, the problem for me is so I try to say many things. I try to part, take part in the discussion. Uh, provide and try to provide evidence. Yes, but uh, I'm afraid. Uh, I was afraid to express my own opinion. So, um, the first assignments I receive feedback from the professor. So they usually give feedback like, uh, your your assignment is really good. Um, so you you try to include uh, many. You try to you cite you cited many. Um, academic articles and many uh, previous literature, but you also need to you don't be afraid to make your own voice in that your own opinion in that. So that will be the academic challenge for most uh, Myanmar students because uh, we really have such a chance to to uh, to take part in a scholarly discussion and to to express our opinion to include our own opinion in our um in our study or uh, in our university study so that's uh the biggest challenge i have regarding the academic um and regarding the study at the university and uh, in terms of so yeah if you were in a tutorial with your professor and your yeah. professor said something and if you disagreed with your professor and you told him that you disagreed with him would that be a disgraceful thing to do in the uk or would that would he not mind yeah, they don't mind that. That's the biggest surprise for us because uh, we usually um, we were usually trained not to you know critique whatever the teacher says, but here um, so we are encouraged to critique and to disagree with the tutor or with the professors if we have if we could provide the good evidence or good um, reasons for that. And I didn't do that much. So that's why the professor encouraged me. Try to critique it. Don't be afraid to do that. Yeah, that that's uh, that's the biggest change for me. Good point, yes. Mike. Yeah. Yes, no, no, yes. No, I think <laughs> well, I think that's very different to Myanmar. My my sense certainly a very long time ago when I was at university is as yeah. long as you had reason and evidence behind your your criticism, a very good way to get extra marks from your professor would be to say I don't entirely agree with you on that point because and then you go through your evidence and then that they actually they actually love it whereas in Myanmar you that is something that you would never do yes um yeah and um that there are probably also going to be many people not applying for the Hornby scholarship, but are also very interested in the fact that you went to university in the UK. Um, for Hornby, there's like 10 people out of 600 going to university in the UK. Would you agree that for undergraduates, the UK is mm -hmm. really not a good destination for Myanmar students? Uh, because there are almost no scholarships and that even for masters that there are they are very few and far between how, how would yeah. how would you yeah thank you mike for that topic yeah um firstly i would like to say that um uh, so i try to uh, research many uh, scholarships but most scholarships are about uh doing master uh so i don't know much about the undergraduate but uh, so, but basically, it's quite obvious that uh, so to do a bachelor degree, we need to study maybe at least three years, three to four years. So, um, uh, but for master degree in the UK, we just need uh, to do uh, one year. So, the school, the organize the, the organizations usually provide funding for a one year study because 
So um, they just need to provide funding for one year, and 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 these uh, after this degree, uh, so the scholars they provided funding are ready, um, are ready for uh, for whatever the fee they have chosen. So it's like a um, the process is quite um, uh, faster than providing funding to the undergraduate student. So they don't usually provide fundings to undergraduates. Uh, so it's, that's why it's really difficult to get an undergraduate scholarship in the UK. Uh, so, so in terms of scholarships, there are two uh, main types of scholarships. So the first one is the uh, merit-based scholarship, and the second one is the need-based scholarship. Uh, so most for most students from my country, uh, especially uh, who study, uh, who have a similar background like me, we study at a um, public school and uh, we graduate uh, from a public university. Uh, so we have a similar uh, study background. So for, for most of us, uh, it's really difficult to get a merit-based scholarship. Merit-based mean they, they, they choose... They provide very limited number of uh, student um, scholarship uh, and and they, they chose student depending on their academic qualifications. So uh, it's not about um, so need based, but for need based scholarship, they focus on the countries, especially developing countries. They, they want to support these countries. So they provide many scholarship for these people, for students from these country. Um, so the numbers uh, compare with the merit-based scholarship, the numbers um, larger than that. So uh, usually the government scholarship like Chevening, uh, Fulbright, New Zealand's government scholarship, Australia Awards, uh, US Aid scholarship. So these are government funded scholarship, need-based scholarship. So they usually select uh, many students, uh, but they are also quite challenging, uh, although many. But um, for merit-based student, so they might select uh, every year, for example, they might select only one t one student, maybe two students. So uh, it's just not from a country, it's from all of other countries. So it's very competitive, it's very less likely. And especially for undergrad, there is, as far as I, I know, there is um, no uh, undergrad scholarship for uh, government funded scholarship for undergraduate students and there are some university scholarship fan, uh, scholarship uh, provided funding for these undergraduate level but uh, these scholarships are like maybe 50% uh, tuition fee or 100% tuition fee so it's just only for tuition fee so um so you might you might got that kind of such kind of scholarship but they are also very competitive and and um, uh, you will need to propose the other uh, uh, man uh, the other um, cost, for example, like visa applications, healthcare surcharge, and living cost, the uh, travel cost, and the are many. Uh, very things we need to. Which are all very yeah. expensive in the UK. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just conscious of time. Um, what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I wondered is, is if anyone uh, has any questions um, for Copio. And please, it doesn't. It don't. They don't have to be specifically about Hornby. They can be more general scholarship questions. Um, if you have a question, don't be shy to ask it. Feel free to give comments in uh, Facebook chat. There is one question. How did you manage your time to attend for the different types of scholarships? Thank you, uh, Tisha Sandy. Okay. 
Um, thank you um, for the question. It, it's also um, great to know about the time management skill. Um, So, um, so I hope you, uh, when I show my PowerPoint slide, I hope you see uh, the list of scholarships available to apply for. Uh, so th th this is the first thing, I make a list of the scholarships I can apply. Um, and it includes the opening um, opening date and then the deadline. Uh, so that's how I can know uh, one which one sh I should prioritize before I prepare for the next one. Um, that's that's uh, the first step I do I do. Uh, but mostly, although we need to apply for many scholarships, for example, uh, I apply for um, three. Uh, firstly, three, yeah. So three scholarship. But so the basically what they want is the same. So. Usually, um, so, it, so we it, they want as a kind of person with the potential for future contributions. Uh, they want uh, a person who is uh, passionate about the field they are working in, and um, and the one who has a uh, academically academically uh, strong and. Uh, professionally uh, can be contributing to the field they are working in. So basically things are similar. So um, so the, the, the scholarship essays might be different, but the background um, is are the same, I think. So uh, we just need to reflect ourselves and we can take notes of our strengths in terms of personal, uh, personal skills and in terms of uh, qualifications in terms of experiences so we just need to um uh, I, I we just need to make a list of these things and we can take a point from this general list and we can um adapt to the requirements of each scholarship essay but usually it start with making a list of which scholarship can i apply when is the deadline and then you can move to uh brainstorming your own uh, brainstorming, reflecting your own strengths and weaknesses. And you can, it's like spice, for example, it's like ingredients, or and you can use these ingredients uh, depending on the, the dish you are preparing, the scholarship you are applying for. So as you said, it's a process. Yeah, it's a process, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, and probably when you first start applying for scholarships, you're very likely to fail but don't give up your if you if you have the ability uh that and the desire and you are going to be a good person for your community eventually you're going to get a scholarship you've just got to keep persisting um and getting better at it yeah exactly yeah uh it's also about persistence and and resilience i think uh myama uh, uh, students are very good at um you know uh the resilience and, and persistent so keep trying and never give up yeah yes and do we have any other questions um uh, they just asked about like oh sorry yeah they just asked about personal statements. I wonder how many words we need to write in the personal statements for the university that you applied. Oh, okay. So usually um, they don't have, uh, so the, the personal statements um, are different depending on the university we are applying for. But usually it might be around 500 to 1000 words. So, but you need to, uh, you need to look at the personal statement uh, what kind of personal statement they want and uh, how many words they need. But usually it might be around 500 to 100. Uh, it's a good length. It's a good length to talk about our set. I think. Thank you for the question. And just on that personal statement, do you think that you can write one personal statement and then send the same personal statement to every every university and scholarship you apply for, or do you have to do you have to tailor it a bit to match the particular course and university or scholarship that you're applying for? Yeah, 
we 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 surely need to tailor it because the courses are different and even the they offer the same degree for example MAT saw degree but the courses they offer are different so we need to tailor it um depending on the courses they offered and it's also good to show them that you you uh, research about these courses. You are very much interested in the this course. So you research about them and you include them in your personal statement. So uh, always it's good to tailor. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you so much, Saya. I just want to ask another question that which I found in the comment section how can we prepare academic writings for master level hmm. uh, thank you for the question uh that's also a great question uh academic writing so it's not also about academic writing it's also about uh reading let's say academic reading hmm. um so for um, so usually, um, it, it involves a lot of work too. Uh, so my suggestion is you can start with uh, reading, uh, reading uh, papers or articles written in academic style, and by reading a lot, you you are you are getting familiar with the academic writing style, and and. Uh, when you when you are familiar with this writing and you can try to learn about how to uh, uh, write in an academic way, um, but so uh, it might also take time, and and you can also uh, try to learn about. Uh, so there are there there are uh, not that much courses available in Myanmar um, um, offering about academic writing, but. Uh, you can try to join the IS preparation courses. IS preparation courses, maybe, for example, I think Affluency Butterfly International is also offering some free courses regarding IS, right? Is that right? So IS writing is also part of the academic writing. So the IS writing, uh, uh, don't take IS writing just to pass the exam. So you can also take it as an academic writing because it's about... Uh, reporting graphs, charts, and it's about uh, when it comes to writing text too, you have to provide evidence for whatever you say. So it's also good practice of academic writing. So in uh, so reading fast, trying to read academic style, uh, academic articles, uh, journals, magazines, and then uh, you can practice, um, you can learn uh, IS preparation courses, but focusing on the IS writing. Yeah. Tell me, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in with a question. When you started yeah. your course, what did you find most difficult, the reading or the writing, uh, or, the, or the speaking? What did the 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 four aisles? What 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 was the struggle for? Did you find you struggled most with? Uh so so even before I joined the master course, so I I read a lot. So reading is not. Uh, a problem for me um but even say so uh, so reading is uh reading uh at a university for the master courses also a little bit different um so we need to uh sometimes we we need to read very quickly it's not we don't have that much time to enjoy our reading so uh we need to learn how to take notes uh, from our reading so uh uh, the biggest challenge for me is I rarely take notes, so I just write. I just write it, and then I uh, try to um, remember in my head. But in longer term, it becomes a problem for me because I couldn't remember which articles are there. So I don't have um, notes. I have uh, purple. I have taken before. So uh, that's been the, kind of the biggest problem. Writing, reading, uh, speaking, listening, uh, all are okay because I have uh, immersed myself a lot before I uh, joined the university courses. But uh, even my reading uh, skill is good. Um, as I didn't take any notes, that has become a problem for me later. So I might say note-taking is also another skill we need to add. <laughs> Yeah. 
So uh, thank you so much, Sayad. We have uh, another question. Did you take one academic IELTS exam and use it for all scholarship applications? Is it applicable? Yes, uh, in short, yes, um, it is. Um, uh, so if you got the IELTS test score, you can use this for any applications. IELTS test, uh, you can use IELTS test score for any applications you want. Yeah. Thank for you. two years, it, it works for yeah, two years. Uh, yeah. Just only yeah. for two years, yeah. <laughs> and but if you want hobbies, IELTS yes. writing part one, you'll see a video which on Fluency Butterfly, which I've made about fluent about IELTS writing part one, and I'm hoping to do another one on IELTS writing part two one day. Oh yeah, that that would be great for them. Yeah. <laughs> And but you don't need to worry about uh, what is it uh, for Hornby scholarship. You don't have to have um, the I score in advance. So even if you don't have that one, you can stay applying for that scholarship. Yeah. Uh, they just ask, do we need to publish as a master student, like as a scholarship student, like who wins? Mm. Yeah. Just... Uh, Okay, thank you for the question. So as a master student in the UK, it's not mandatory. Uh, it's not mandatory. We don't have to publish. Uh, but if you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you have a um, future, future uh, purposes of maybe working at a university, or if you want to show off your, uh, the work you have done, so it's better to publish. But um, so it, it just, if you're more interested in research and academic world, if you want to immerse into that field, it's good to uh, publish, yeah, articles. Um, so these days, um, we can also publish research articles and also book reviews. And it might be, uh, we, you can also share about your teaching experiences. These are kind of uh, the things we can publish. So. Uh, I would like to suggest to publish, but it's not mandatory. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah, th thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, actually, this is the questions are from me. Like, oh, okay. You know yeah. that this? No, 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 no. The, this question. Oh, a new question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My question <laughs> is like, um, how do you want to suggest to students like who just export scholarship? And then like mostly like you know uh, most of the students in Myanmar they just ask the information for from other other people. I mean like instead of like you know making an effort to research. So what kind of suggestion do you want to give, you know, to those students who are really eager to apply for a scholarship? Hmm. Thank you for the question, Teacher Sandy. Uh, uh, that's also I think personally I think. Uh, because even myself, I did um, lots of research before I applied for the scholarship. Uh, so I rarely ask other people about um, uh, the scholarship. Uh, so I usually research myself. So because when I did research ourselves, uh, it also shows we are making effort. And uh, so, for example, people are joining and are listening uh, here today about Hombi scholarship. So they just know about the scholarship from my perspective, but there are many other perspectives. There are many other areas uh, so that they can learn about this scholarship. They can learn about these trust. So I would like to suggest, yeah, to take an, uh, to make an effort in researching ourselves because researching, researching means trying to find information yourself. So um, it's also a good habit and it will be very helpful not just for your scholarship application, but also for your academic journey and maybe in uh, the uh, the professional um, journey. Thank you, Teacher Sandy. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, actually, we just uh, received a lot of uh, messages like uh, from our message pouch. So this is like why I want to ask for this one. Okay. Yeah. So thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sayan. Uh, so this is uh, all the questions that I found off like uh, from the comment section. Okay. Yeah. So thank thank you, Sia. So, uh, Mike, like you can continue. Great. Well, that well, I think that that was fantastic. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we've learned lots about Hornby, but I think that we've learned lots about actually getting a scholarship to university, the importance of the personal statement, the importance of thinking about when the scholarship giver is saying, well, why do we give Sandy this scholarship? Because she is very clever and very hardworking. And using this star thing, she's shown how clever and hardworking she is. She is very focused on the, the course and the university. She has clearly done a lot of research. She knows exactly about what she's going to be studying. She has a career which maybe matches it. The reason that she wants to do it is because she will then go back to Myanmar and this will be the career that she's going to follow. And then also with this idea of the benefit that this scholarship is going to give to Sandy, both personally and for the community. They can see, well, Sandy's really going to benefit herself and she's going to use what she has learned to help her community. And again, we can see proof, we can see evidence, maybe from everything that she's done at Fluency Butterfly, that she is a community person. Um, and this process that uh, that Copio talked about, that you know, it, it's fighting, you're gonna, you're gonna fail, uh, but you're gonna get better at it. This process of giving yourself enough time to apply for the, for the degree to look and see, am I the right person? Am I eligible? Um, and to go through this whole like, this whole process he has is, is how do you make your personal statement right? How do you write your essays in the best way and answer the interviews in the best way? Um, and good luck to all of you. I hope that you all become scholars one day. And Copio, thank you. And and Sandy, thank, thank you also to Fluency Butterfly. Uh, for 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 your time and for the whole audience for your time today. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mike, uh, for your recap and for your insightful questions today, and for your effort for uh, for what have you done for uh, Myanmar students. And thank you, Teacher Sandy, for organizing uh, for for organizing this event, and thank you, Fluency Butterfly, and. Uh, last but not least, uh, many thanks to the audience uh, who are joining live today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saya. We don't have like, uh, I think, words that cannot express how much we are grateful for that. Thank you so much, uh, Saya, Pio, and Mike. Yeah. Thank you so, for your valuable time to us. Ta-ta. 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 Bye.